Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Hurricane, and this is the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty Season 10 Recap Video. The series has been completed, 10 full seasons, and a very fulfilling ending, as the Gophers win their second national championship of the series, and conclude the perfect season on the back of their elite defense. So today we're going to talk about this season and just look at stats and numbers and basically uh, close the book on here. It's sad to see the series come to an end, but it has definitely been completed. We've done everything there is to do in here. Ten full seasons. We've grinded from the bottom of the Big Ten up to the top to be one of the best teams in college football and stuck around for a while. The recruiting classes have been stacked. We are a dynasty and we have completed the goal of the series after 10 full seasons. This was so much fun, guys, and let's look back through this past year. We had never had a perfect season ever on my channel, whether it's a franchise or a dynasty, and this was the very first one, and this was by far the team that was most fit to do it because of the defense. They never allowed more than 23 points in a game. And the offense, despite not being fantastic, they had some really good outings like the Clemson game and the Wisconsin game and the Purdue game as well. They did just enough. I remember the very beginning, TJ Jackson did not run the football very effectively. Let's check some numbers for him. And he ended up with very good numbers, which is crazy considering his bad start. 61 yards, 4.3 a carry. That's not terrible. The UAB game against Aaron Higdon. And here, how many yards did Higdon have? 85 compared to TJ Jackson who had 55, a 3.4 average. Then it was the Maryland game, our only game against the Terrapins in this series. And Jackson had 25 yards. Then the Rutgers game. This was Jackson logging 40 yards. So it looked like he might not even make it to 500. Yet, it stepped up starting in the Iowa game, the second shutout in the series. And this is where Jackson went off for, no, only 71 yards in this game. I forget when he actually started to really tear it up. Was it the Northwestern game? This was Jackson for 182. That was the start of it. And we all know he ended with very good numbers. And we had so many big games this year. There was the Iowa game, the Clemson game, the Illinois game, and others. And I kept trying to like hype these up as like huge matchups. And we just kept playing our best in that in those type of situations. So Tim Gallagher finishes with 17 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. The touchdowns were down from a year ago, which isn't really too much of a surprise. Completion percentage also way down. So the numbers were not great for him. Running wise, he had how many fumbles? I gotta see this. He had eight last year and nine this year. Wow. Rushing, TJ Jackson, 1,305 rushing yards. We had Matt Pierre the year before, so this was TJ Jackson's time to shine. He didn't do it early on, but boy... 1305 after those first five games that is pretty impressive i'm not sure where that ranks among the most in series history but it's got to be like toward the top which is just i still can't believe it after the way this season began 14 rushing touchdowns eight runs of 20 yards or more things just got so much better he also was a good receiver for us this season Marcus Williams had the most catches and yards, only two touchdowns, but a big one to start uh, the offense for us in the national championship game. Numbers were a little bit down from last season. Here is Lee James, who had a very good year after being known more for his inconsistent hands in the past. Five drops last year, only one this past season. I think I remember it. Clint Porter, nice little possession receiver. His numbers were also down, but had more touchdowns. Nick Wilkerson didn't really have the big year I kind of hoped he would have. He has really good speed and route running, but still was held to 37 catches, 573. How many drops? Five. 
Let's see. Let's go to the defensive side. We had 100 tackles for two guys, Josh Mackey and Reggie Carter. Now, this was Mackey's first year of really getting to start, and he was just... Man, this guy just likes to hit people. No, it was his second year of getting to play. That's right. This guy, he's just... He just hits hard. He doesn't force a lot of fumbles, but man... Week in and week out, opposing running backs just... Kept getting destroyed by Josh Mackey. And then if it wasn't Mackey, it was going to be Reggie Carter. And he was... He played significantly for four years... He might be one of the best players ever in this series. Jonathan Starks was fantastic. He and Carter are at the top of the defensive list for sure. I drafted or I uh, recruited some pretty good linebackers in here. Now I hoped Calvin Hall would have a bigger season, but uh, he didn't. I remember when he almost went pro before 2021. And then he had like three interceptions in the first three games of his junior season. And then stuck around. I wish that he would have ended up with more uh, turnovers here the last couple of years, but he was still a good defender for us. Our uh, scheme wasn't designed to really create turnovers. It was really designed to stop the run and to force third and longs. Here is Greg Kelly with 14 sacks this past year. He ended up with the most in school history because he played significantly for four years. He had nine sacks in two of those. Uh, Vincent Walker, big middle linebacker, not my type of linebacker, he's more of an old school thumper, but he was good enough to play, he wasn't really a three down guy as much, but still logged a lot of tackles, some big hits, and was a very underrated blitzer. Here are the rest of the numbers going down, Tony Hunter also very good, 23 sacks in his career, always got better. Here are the total sack numbers. We had two guys in double digits. Ricky Jack did a nice job, I thought, applying pressure. Josh Mackey as well. Let's see interceptions. Not many. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not even one a game. And I like interceptions. It's my favorite play in football, but our scheme was not really depended on getting interceptions. You're going to get that a lot more in man coverage, and we were a zone team. It's what we succeed at. We can hit jar the ball loose, stop the run. Those were our strengths. We played to them very well. This was by far the greatest defense I've ever put together on my channel. These guys did not allow big games for opposing offenses. They were just fantastic. Great in the red zone, especially when you cross the 50. You might make it across midfield, but then you're not getting much further. We made teams settle for a lot of field goals. We got uh, big plays, a lot of sacks, and some key turnovers as well. This defense, though, I just can't get over how good they were. We ended up with a number one total defense. The pass defense was a little bit more average, which was pretty evident. We gave a lot of passing yards. But running, you could not run on this defense. Nope. Let least uh, points allowed. We were first in sacks. And uh, probably not anywhere near the top in terms of turnovers, but that's okay. We forced a lot of punts. Look at this. We were tied for first in defensive red zone attempts. And we were tied for first in defensive red zone touchdowns allowed. And then on the flip side, we also allowed a lot of field goals in the red zone because they couldn't get into the end zone for a touchdown. So that just shows how good this defense was, especially when you got close. We were not going to give up many red zone scores. Here is a look at the roster and the overall ratings as Greg Kelly was our highest rated player. And I know a lot of you guys want to see these ratings. I always like see people wanting to make these players on Madden or in whatever they're playing. And so I might end up doing like a team builder like I did at the end of the UTSA series. I had some help doing that and I have uh, UTSA team builder files. And I could do the same for this series if you guys just wanted to have those players. And if you wanted to, like, move one of them to Madden and you wanted to, just wanted to see what their ratings are. Like, how I do with Andy McKenzie. I saw his NCAA ratings, moved him to Madden, and translated the ratings in a way that made sense. So a little bit less speed, a little bit less everything, pretty much. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I did with it. 
But, like, I'm sure you guys want to see Reggie Carter's ratings. This guy was just absolutely fantastic. A 94 overall with sideline to sideline speed. And, of course, 99 hit power, 93 pursuit, 92 block shedding. He can be your strong sideline backer, shed the blocks, make the tackle. And he can also rush the passer as he had seven sacks this past year. Greg Kelly helped anchor our defensive line for a number of years with his strength especially, but he also had very good finesse moves, even higher than his power, although the power was mostly on display. He can stop the run, rush the passer. This guy is a real problem at 276 pounds. Who else should I show here? Let's go to... Let's check out Calvin Hall. And this guy is just a very special safety. Elite range and coverage ability. Can play either safety spot. Probably better as a free safety, but always played strong safety for me. And has very good man coverage to line up against slot receivers and tight ends as well. TJ Jackson had the big year with his speed and very good ability to break tackles and get those yards after contact. We saw the power and the elusiveness as well. Looked a little bit like Matt Pierre out there. But Matt Pierre was... He was, like, one of my favorite players to ever use in this series because he wasn't that fast. But I just used all the moves in his arsenal to get past defenders, and it was so much fun. Unfortunately, we never had anybody in this series really heavily considered for the Heisman. So I didn't have much to show you guys in terms of Heisman watch. This year it was a running back winning it, Trent Green from UCF. We never got to see him play, but we did get to see Kenny Blanchard play for Illinois and he was second. We are very well represented here however. These are the All-Americans. Zach Turner at left tackle. And then Greg Kelly, Tony Hunter, Reggie Carter, Maurice Manning, or no, no I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm used to saying Maurice Manning because it's Super Mega Baseball on my second channel, I'm sorry. Mark Manning, not on our team. Josh Mackey, Anybody else? LaShawn Smith, Calvin Hall, Shane Wood, Dwayne Miller, Brandon Jones. Look at all those first team All-Americans. And then you get to the second teamers. And we have Ricky Jack as a first year starter. And Eric Lemon who moved from safety to slot corner. But is still a second team All-American safety. Freshmen, we did have our guards on here. I'm not sure if they really deserved it. But both guards ended up being All-Americans as freshmen. Three sacks given up there by Lewis and one by Inman. I'm not sure how accurate those numbers are. But I don't remember those guys being a real problem. The inside pressure wasn't like the biggest issue. Uh, Vince Nelson here, this kind of seems like uh, whatever. Just one sack. But we'll take it. All Big Ten now. The same players that were All-Americans. And then Tate Barnes. Anybody else joining the fun here? Josh, uh, Jason Johnson. And then second teamers, we had TJ Jackson. I'm happy to see him get an accolade there after his really good season. There is John Rice off the bench. Ronnie Osborne, Eric Lemon. Let's go through these awards now. The Maxwell goes to Matt Berry, Walter Camp to Kenny Blanchard, Benaric to Reggie Carter, and you can see everybody else in our defense pretty much there in the top 10. The Nagurski goes to Reggie Carter as well. The O'Brien goes to Matt Moore. Walker to Kenny Blanchard. Bletnikoff to Kyle Hughes. The Mackey to Mike Ross. Where's Marcus Williams on here? He should be somewhere up here. Look at the stats in comparison. Uh, I guess lack of touchdowns definitely hurts you in these standings. Outland to Daniel Howell. Remington to Rufus Thompson. Lombardi to Greg Kelly. Reggie Carter is the best linebacker. The Thorpe goes to Kyle Malone. And Shane Wood is the Groza Award winner, and Dwayne Miller the Ray Guy Award. Best returner, Brandon Jones. Here were the bowl results, and then after this I'm going to show you guys the draft results. And I have not even seen this yet, so I'll sim forward, and we'll see where all these players end up getting drafted. Because we had a lot of seniors on the team. That defense was guys with a lot of experience that stuck around for a very long time. And I want to see what round those guys get drafted in. I expect a lot of very early picks. So we have a couple guys declaring here. And look at all the seniors projected to go very early. And then a few guys just graduating. So let's sim forward now and see where these guys actually get taken. Oh my, look at this. 
five first round picks, including Mike Moore. And then Reggie Carter goes in the second. Are you kidding me? Reggie Carter should be a top 10 pick easily. Come on, he's so scheme versatile. He can do so many different things. LaShawn Smith in the second along with Lee James. Tony Hunter in the third. Josh Mackey, Jason Johnson. Brandon Jones goes all the way in the seventh. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve picks. Five in the first round, three in the second. And look at this, guys. Defense, 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 defense. Absolutely unbelievable defense, guys. What you're seeing right here is eight of our starting defenders getting drafted. Most of them in the first two rounds. So that tells you guys just how good this defense was for us in Season 10. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much once again for supporting the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty. I will have the highlight video coming out this week, putting together all the highlights from Season 10. And I have been asked to do a highlight video for the entire series, and that might be possible at some point. I'm not planning on doing that right now. That would be a very big project, and I would have a lot of games to go through. But maybe at some point... I can put together something for the entire series. But that is it for today, guys. Leave your feedback down below. Thank you once again. I really enjoyed the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty. Sad to see it end, but it was a great series that definitely accomplished its goal. Ten seasons is an incredible run, and I'm very happy to have enjoyed it here with you guys. So that is it for today. I will see you later. Have a great rest of your day, guys.